All right, everybody, ready for another deep dive. Today, it's all about AI language models. Those things are everywhere now. Yeah, especially these two, DeepSeek and ChatGPT. Everyone wants to know which one is better. Right, it's like, <laughs> which one should I actually be using? Like, is it the right tool for the job? Exactly, that's what we're gonna figure out today. And you know, it's funny, we're getting into all this because of this document we found, it's called uh, Kun Kwam V Wong. Which basically means like place text in Thai. That's right. So anyway, this document dives deep into these two AI models. It compares them and contrasts them, you know. Yeah, gets into all the nitty gritty. And right away it point out something that I think is super important. Language focus. Yeah, that's a big one. So oh. DeepSeek. This one comes from this Chinese AI lab, DeepSeek AI. Very straightforward naming there. Yeah, keeping it simple. And, you know, DeepSeek, it's all about Chinese and English. Like, it's really, really good with those two languages. So bilingual, basically. Yeah, you can see why that'd be useful for, like, translating stuff. Yeah, like important documents or, I don't know, maybe like a global business deal. Exactly. Or even just, like, you know, making information more accessible to a wider audience. That's a good point. Yeah. And this document, it also talks about DeepSeek encoding. Oh, yeah. It's got this thing called Deep Seek Coder, which is pretty impressive. Deep Seek Coder. Okay, so what's so special about that? Well, imagine you're a developer, right? And you need to write code, but you got to do it in both Chinese and English. So Deep Seek Coder can do that for you. It can help, yeah. It's like having um, a translator and a coder all in one. Is that a thing that a lot of developers actually need? I mean, coding in two languages like that? Oh, yeah. More than you think. Okay. Especially with the way, you know, the tech world is so global these days. That makes sense. And there's something else about DeepSeek that caught my eye. It's open source, right? You got it. And that's a big deal for a lot of people. It means, essentially, you can customize it. So it's not just a black box. Mm -hmm. You can actually see how it works and change it if you need to. Right. You can kind of make it your own, which okay. is something you don't always see with AI. Okay. So that's DeepSeek, bilingual, good with coding, open source. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now let's switch gears and talk about ChatGPT. This one's from OpenAI, and it uses GPT-4, which is, well, you know. The big name in town these days, huh? Everyone's talking about GPT-4. It's like the rock star of AI. And the document actually calls ChatGPT more of a generalist. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's not as specialized as DeepSeek. It can do a lot of different things. So it's less like a specialized tool and more like a Swiss Army knife. Okay, so give us some examples. What can ChatGPT do? Well, one of its biggest strengths is conversation. Like, it's really good at generating text that sounds natural, like you're talking to a real person. So it's not just spitting out robotic responses. It actually sounds human. Yeah, it's gotten really good at that. And it can even, you know, reason through things. Reason, so like it can actually think for itself. Well, think might be a bit of a stretch, but it can definitely analyze information and come to logical conclusions. It can solve problems, answer questions, even get creative. Creative, what do you mean by that? It can write stories, poems, stuff like that. Whoa, hold on. So it's not just a chatbot. It's like a writer, too. It can be, yeah. It's pretty versatile. And it can even be a tutor, believe it or not. It can explain concepts and help you learn new things. Wow, that's amazing. But where does all that knowledge come from? Well, that's the thing with these AI models. They're trained on massive amounts of data. Like the entire internet. Pretty much. So ChatGTT has access to this huge library of information, and it can use that to answer your questions, give you insights, even offer new perspectives on things. Okay, so DeepSeek and ChatGPT, both super impressive, both doing their own thing. But how do we actually use them? Good question. Accessibility is key. You know, how easy is it to actually get your hands on these tools? Right, because what's the point of all this amazing AI if nobody can use it? So how do we use DeepSeek? Well, there are a couple of ways. You can do something called self-hosting, which is basically like setting up your own server. Sounds a little technical. It is, yeah. But if you're comfortable with that, it gives you a lot of control. Or you can use an API. API, what's that? It stands for Application Programming Interface. Basically, it's like a messenger that lets different software programs talk to each other. So you could integrate DeepSeek into your own apps. That's the idea. You can make it work with the tools you already use. Okay, that's pretty cool. What about ChatGPT? How do we access that? So ChatGPT have a web app, which is super user-friendly. That's good for people like me who aren't like super tech savvy. Exactly. But it also has an API if you want to get more technical with it. And it's even integrated into other tools like Microsoft Copilot. So it's pretty accessible then. 
Very much so. You can use it on your computer, on your phone. It's pretty versatile. Okay, so we know how to use them, but are there any downsides? The document mentioned some limitations. Ah, yeah. There's no such thing as a perfect AI, right? Sadly, no. So what are some of the limitations of DeepSeek? Well, it's great at what it does, bilingual stuff and coding, but it can struggle with things that are like more nuanced. Nuanced, like what? Well, like, you know, creative writing or understanding really subtle differences in language. I see. So maybe not the best for writing poetry. Probably not, no. Okay. It's more of a logic-based AI. Got it. What about ChatGPT? Any limitations there? Well, it can handle complex stuff, but it's still learning, you know? So it's not perfect? Not yet, no. Sometimes it makes these leaps in logic that, well, they don't always make sense to us humans. So you can't just blindly trust it. You have to use your own judgment, too. Exactly. It's a tool. It's not a replacement for critical thinking. That's a good reminder. Yeah. So to sum it all up, DeepSeek, good for bilingual stuff, coding. Open source, too, which is a big plus for some people. Right. ChatGPT, more general purpose, good with conversations, tutoring, that kind of thing. If you need information or want to bounce ideas off of something, ChatGPT is a good bet. Awesome. So the big question is, which one's better? Well, it really depends on what you need it for, right? It's like you wouldn't use a hammer to screw in a light bulb. Exactly. You got to pick the right tool for the job. Okay. So here's something to think about as we finish up. We've talked about these AI models separately. But what if they work together? Oh, that's interesting. Like combined their strength somehow. Yeah. Like imagine DeepSeek writing this super complex code and then ChatGPT explaining it to you in plain English so you could actually understand it. Wow. That would be something else. Right. It's mind-blowing to think about what the future holds for AI. And who knows? Maybe we'll see these two models team up one day. Now that would be a deep dive worth waiting for. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Go check out DeepSeek and ChatGPT and let us know what you think. Until next time. See ya.